them through the years, for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, it was the best example in the Bible of what happens to a man that dies without God. And I want you to listen to it. And the title of the message this morning is, The Saddest Story Ever Told. Luke chapter 16 and verse number 19. The saddest story ever told. I can think of a lot of sad stories in and out of the Bible, but this is no doubt the most tragic, horrible story that you've ever heard in your life. Verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, there's a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They are Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. There's many a sad story in this world. People lose their health. People lose their their uh, money and friends or family, job, sorrow upon sorrow. But there's not a story you've ever heard or ever will hear as sad as a person dying without God and going to hell and staying in hell forever and ever and ever. It's mind-boggling. Absolutely mind-boggling when you really think about it. The biggest trick of our generation is that the devil has all the folks out here in this world tricked into thinking that all that matters is what you are in this world. That's the biggest rip-off. It's the biggest scam uh, of, of all eternity. And it's when the devil makes people think that all that counts is what this life... People, what happens in this life don't make that much difference compared to eternity. Except what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. People so concerned about becoming this or that or famous or getting rich or movie star or whatever. And it really don't matter. The saddest thing could ever happen to a person is die without God. Here in the Bible... Jesus recorded this story. It's not a parable, as the Jehovah Witnesses would have you to believe. The Bible said there was a certain rich man, and he named people in this story, like Lazarus. And there's no, no personal proper names in parables at all. So we know this is not a parable. It's an actual account of two men who really did live, and really did die, and really did go to two places when they died. I want to say the first thing about this man this morning. He doubted the Word of God while he was living. He doubted the Word of God while he was living. There's millions of people in hell this morning that doubted the Word of God while they was living. That's why they're in hell today. They doubted the Word of God while 
Father living. He had Moses and the prophets, but did not believe them. You say, well, what did Moses and the prophets say about it, preacher? There's all kinds of stories in Moses and the prophets. Numbers 21 told about the people when the snakes came out and bit them, and God made a remedy and told Moses to put a serpent on a pole. That was a picture of how Jesus would come and die on the cross to keep people out of hell. He had that story in his Bible. He knew about Genesis 24, that uh, about Abraham and Isaac and Rebecca and the bride and the Holy Spirit and how that a man would be saved. He knew about uh, the bread of life and the water of life and Elijah. And he knew that David wrote in Psalm 917 that the wicked would be turned into hell. And he knew that David wrote, Though I make my bed in hell. He had been told. He had the scripture. He had the warnings. But he did not listen. He knew about Isaiah 53 where it described the death of Jesus Christ. When he said, By his stripes we're healed, we're bruised for our iniquities, and, and he would be punished for our sin. This man had the scripture, but ignored them while he was living. I will tell you, the dumbest thing you ever do in your life is ignore what this Bible says for you. You hear me this morning? The dumbest thing you can ever do is ignore what the Bible says. I know it's vogue to ignore the Bible. I know it's cool to ignore the Bible out there in the world. But it's not smart. And it's not right. You're making a tragic mistake if you ignore the Word of God while you live. But secondly, this morning I want to say this man considered riches more important than spiritual values. He considered riches more important than spiritual values. Values. Money without God is always a curse. Hear me? Money without God is always a curse. There's nothing wrong with money by itself. Without God, it can become the greatest curse that's ever been on a human being's life. They that believe money will do anything, will do anything for money. You hear me? They that believe money will do anything, will do anything for money. He depended on his money. Jesus said how hard it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Why? He said that because when a man gets a lot of money, he has a tendency to rely on his money. He has a tendency to think his money will get him out of any jam. He has a tendency to think he can buy his way out of anything. But I want to tell you this morning, friend, you can't buy your way out of hell, and you can't buy God's favor, and you can't buy God's blessings, and there's not enough money in your pocket or in your bank account to ever pay God for one sin you ever have committed. He considered riches more important than spiritual value. You hear me today? He made a big mistake. I want to tell you what money will do. Money will buy a husk, but not kernels in the corn. Money will buy you food, but it can't buy you an appetite. Money will buy you medicine, but it can't make you well. Money will buy you acquaintance, but not friends. You hear me? Money will buy you plenty of people around you, but money won't buy you one friend. Give me just a tad on this, Roy. Money won't buy you friends. Money can buy you a dog, but it can't make him wag his tail. Money will buy you a woman, but it won't make her love you. There's some things, and the most important things is what money cannot buy. Money cannot buy. Spiritual things are more important than riches. You know what? Our world today has gone crazy over money. We worship money in our society. We think anything, we do anything for money. But I say to you today, there's a lot of things more important than money. And it's how you stand with God. Number three, he died, he died without making it right with God. Verse 23 told you, he died without the new birth. See, the Bible says you've got to be born again to go to heaven. Have you been born again this morning? Has it ever happened to you? You say, I don't know what you're talking about. Then you haven't. Have you been born again? Jesus said, unless you're born again, you can't go to heaven when you die. 
It's like this. This man was born once, and he had to die twice. He dies physically, and then he dies spiritually in hell forever and ever and ever. If you're born twice, you only have to die once. I've been born twice. I was born uh, as a little baby. Uh, I think... I think I was born in the main hospital, the old main hospital up here, and uh, I was born the first time. I was born the second time when I was 18 years old at Nebo Baptist Church in Revival. I came to the Lord. I said, God, I'm a sinner. I can't do it myself. He changed my life. He turned everything around. I became a new creature in Jesus. I was born again. Now, I only have to die one time. Physically, this old body is going to die. Hallelujah. I, amen. I'm going to die one time. I was born two times. If you're only born one time, you have to die two times. You die physically when your body goes in the grave, and you die spiritually forever and ever and ever in the lake of fire. And you scream and you burn and you beg God for mercy and you beg for a drop of water on your tongue, but you never get out. He died without making it right with God. For heaven's sake, people, don't die without making things right with God. It's not too late for you. It's too late for him. It's too late for everybody else. It's not too late for you today. Well, I tell you, I wish I could come and sit in your seat and jump up and run down near the altar for you. If I could do it, I'd close my Bible right now. Go sit in your seat, and I'd say, I'll do it for you. And I'd run down here and say, one of you guys help me. And I'd get down right here, and I'd say, God, what do you want me to do? And I'd trust Him as my Savior. I'd do it for you. But I can't do it for you. You're going to have to do it yourself. He died without making it right with God. Number four. You see, that he died without the new birth. He died without saving faith. He died without God's blessings. He died without making it right with God. He said a preacher one time was up preaching on heaven. And the preacher said, you want to go to heaven? You want to go to heaven? And some mocker went by and said, how far is it to heaven, preacher? Making a joke. And the preacher looked back and said, just one step. Will you take it? Just one step between you and heaven this morning. Will you take it? It's that one step out of that pew down here to this altar. You know, it blows your mind that God hinges all eternity on one step of faith that you can make right here this morning. That makes this the most important business in the world we're in right here. But there ain't no business as important as God's business right here. Hey, he was... Number four, he was disappointed at the state of death. According to verse 24, he lifted up his eyes in hell. Now there's two or three things we gather from this. Number one, your finance falls at death's door. Your finance will fail you at death's door. Okay, how much money you got? Richest man in the world, that Bill William Gates, whoever he is, his finances won't help him when he dies. I don't care how much money a person's got, when you die, brother, you're broke. It's just you came into this world with nothing, you're going to leave with nothing, and we got people all over this town that all they think about from the time they wake up is the time they go to bed, is I want more, 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 more money, more. More, 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 and they're not going to take one penny of it with them. How crazy that is. We should be making our plans to meet God. We should be laying up treasures in heaven where moth don't corrupt, where thieves can't break through and steal. We ought to be sending some off ahead to God, brother, and not just uh, concerned about things down here. Let me tell you something else. Family ties didn't help him when he died, neither. He had five brothers, he had a father, and he's begging for one drop of water on his tongue, and none of them can help you. You say, if anybody will help me, my family will. Listen, when you die, your family can't help you. His finances couldn't help him. His family couldn't help him. His friends, I'll tell you somebody else, his friends and his rabbis couldn't help him. Can you imagine at this man's funeral, he was a rich man. No doubt they went down to the funeral home when they made the arrangements for his funeral. 
They picked out the absolute finest casket. They said, we want the best money can buy with, with, with gold edges on it. And that heart... Uh, cherry wood, a walnut or something and they picked out the most expensive casket in the place and more the flowers were from wall to wall and I mean everything had it in the nicest synagogue in the land and the rabbi would step up maybe somebody else and talk about what a fine citizen he was or what he'd done let me tell you this morning not one word that said at your funeral is going to do you one bit of good not one flower that anybody sends is going to help you one bit. You're already gone, brother. It's over. It's over. The second you die, it's history. Your life is gone. You're in heaven or hell the second you leave this world. Disappointed at the state of death. Hey, you know what? It had been better off that man. He had never been born into this world. If you're here this morning and you're not saved, it'd been better for you if you would have never been born. You'll curse the day your mom brought you into this world. And you wind up in hellfire. Number five. Number five. He discovered too late the need to repent. According to verse 26. He found out several things. He found out that prayer after death does no good. I repeat, praying after your dad helps you absolutely none. Amen. That's right. People say, well, I've heard people tell me, they say, well, my uncle died and we want you to pray for him. There's no use praying for your uncle now. Amen. You cannot help anybody by praying for them after they're dead. Right. Did you know there is no such thing as purgatory? I'll give you a million dollars if you can show me a purgatory in the Bible. million dollars cash. There is no such thing. You say, well, you ain't going to get a million dollars. I know I can't, but I can find a million dollars for you. You can find purgatory in King James Bible. There is no such place. There is no such thing. There is no intermediate state where you stand there kind of between hell and between hell uh, where your loved ones put money in a box and try to pray you out. That's ridiculous. There is no such place. These two men died. One went to Abraham's bosom in paradise. The other went to hell. There is no in between in this Bible. That's out of God's character. God's always in or out, up, down, save, law. There, God never has three. He always has two. One way or the other way. Up or down. Right or wrong. With God, it's heaven or it's hell. And you're on your way to one of those two places. Right now, I hope God will open your eyes this morning. And you'll run to Jesus Christ while you've got an opportunity. He found out that mercy after death is unattainable. The state you leave in is the state you stay in. Nothing changes after you die. You say, well, I, listen, did you know there's more praying going on in hell this morning than there are on this earth? I guarantee you. But you talk about a prayer meeting. Sometimes I try to imagine it, and just once in a while it really gets real to me. And I can see people well, just rolling and tossing and flames coming up all around them. And I hear them saying, No, God! No! No, God! Not this! I can't stand it! No, God! Please! God! And not God does not hear one prayer. He, he blocked it off. He's turned their microphones off. He's closed them off. They're in a soundproof hell that the prayers can't get through to God. He hears no prayers after you're dead. You better pray now. You better pray now. You got any praying to do? You better do it today. He discovered mercy after death was unattainable. He, just, he found out that his pardon after his death is unscriptural. It's nowhere in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible where anybody gets any mercy after they die. Then number six, he was doomed forever without God. He is separated from everything holy and pure. No peace, no light, no smiles. He's better off not even to exist. No flowers, no trees. 
No little kids. No happiness. No fresh air. No water. You say, I don't believe God would do that. God ain't doing it. You're doing it yourself. You are choosing. You are choosing to go to hell. God's made the way. You see, the truth is God won't make you go to heaven. People say, I don't believe God will make you go to hell. Make you go to hell. He won't. He won't make you go to heaven either. It's your choice. God's not just going to zap you and take you to heaven against your will. His Son died for your sin. Are you listening to me? Jesus Christ died and shed innocent blood to keep you out of hell. By the way, can I just stop right here and say this? Listen, that's why a Christian should never, ever, ever have a bad day. Amen? Hey, no matter how bad it gets down here, glory to God, at least we are going to heaven when we leave this mess. Now, oh, thank God we're not going to stay down here forever. Thank God we've got a better place to go. Son, I hate this world. I hate my flesh. I hate this old world. There's no place to hang around. We, we, God's got somewhere better for us to go. And we're going there one of these days. We're going. We're going. Thank God we're going. Get rid of all this trouble down here. He's separated from everything. To everything awful and ugly. All the wicked. All the time. With the most ungodly passions. Biting on each other like animals in hell fire. His sentence can never be changed. No pardon. No parole after you've been there eight or ten thousand years. Think about it. When the big snow hit up the mountains around here, you can sit and watch out your window. A million snowflakes. And it takes a lot of them to pile up. You think about how many snowflakes would be just say in this platform in eight inches of snow. Millions and millions and billions covers all of western North Carolina up into the trillions and trillions of snowflakes. If eight inches of snow fell and covered all of North Carolina, western North Carolina... And you died and went to hell the day that snow fell. And God looked down and after 1,000 years let one snowflake melt. And He left you in hell for another 1,000 years and the second snowflake melted. And He left you in hell for another 1,000 years and the third snowflake melted. And you stay in hell for another thousand years and the fourth snow. Are you listening to me this morning? Anybody's out of their mind, they wouldn't want to be saved and miss a place like that. If God said come down here and stand on your head, I'd say that's a small thing to do. If God said let everybody in man line up and spit in your face, that would be no price to pay. If God said, let them cut you out, that would be a blessing compared to going to hell. If God said, lay on a bed of needles for a million years with pain going through your body, it would be a great treat. A million years torture compared to going to hell. You say, preacher, do you really believe that? Hey, I believe that because the Bible says that. You say, well, our generation will never believe that. You're exactly right. And our generation's going to hell, too. Brother, God's never air-conditioned hell. God's never turned the heat down. God's never... It's still just as hot as it ever has been. And there's people screaming there this morning, trying to get out. That's why we run buses. That's why we pray. That's why we have youth rallies. Because that's what matters. When the bottom line is, people's going to hell, and we got to try to keep them out of there. Doom forever without God. Have you ever heard of Tom Paine, Thomas Paine? He's made into a hero in this world, but because he wrote that great, supposedly great treatise on the age of reason, well known around the world, literature and stuff like that. Have you ever heard what Tom Paine said before he died? 
Before Tom Paine died, he said, I would give worlds if the age of reason had never been published. Oh, Lord, help me. Christ, help me. It is hell to be left alone. You ever heard of Voltaire? Voltaire, they make Voltaire like he's some great person in history. He was a great infidel. You want me to tell you what, kids, you want me to tell you what Voltaire said before he died? Right before he died, Voltaire said, Oh, Lord Jesus, I must die abandoned by God and man. According to his testimony right now, Voltaire's in hell. What a flop. What a failure. You say, well, the world thinks he's a great statesman and literature and all that kind of stuff. Listen, God don't look at things the way this world looks at things. They look at it backwards here. They think somebody... They, this world thinks John Lennon was a great person. They think, John, oh, man, he's cool. He's great. He's in hell! He didn't get saved his last few days. He said he didn't believe in Jesus. That's what he said. He called him a dirty Catholic Spaniard bastard. That's what John Lennon said Jesus Christ was. He threw condoms full of water at nuns and made fun of the crucifix. That's what John Lennon thought about Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you what, brother, that man was a fool, and he's in hell this morning. And if he was here today, he wouldn't sing, let it be. He'd be singing in the room at the cross, and he'd be down here bowing his head and begging God, have mercy on his wretched soul. Things change after you die, brother. Things ch everything's different when a man dies. What I'm preaching this morning is absolutely contrary to our whole educational system and belief system, political system in America. Brother, God has all God said it, the world's always going this way, He's always going that way. Total opposite. He was doomed forever. You know, I think about this thing, man, saddest story ever told. Do you realize this morning things could have been a lot different for him? Just think how different it could have been. What if he had admitted his need? When Lazarus was laid at his gate full of sores and maybe somebody gave him a track or witness to him or something, what if he said, you know, you know, I'm a rich man and I own a whole lot of stuff and I got a lot of money, but... You know, I'm going to die one of these days, and I really do need to get right with God. If he'd have bowed on his knees and said, Lord, forgive me, think how different this story would have been today. He'd be in heaven right now. That's all he had to do is trust Jesus Christ as Savior. He'd be in heaven right now. And he'd accomplished the work of God. He could have kept his money. No big deal. He could have just been saved. It could have been a lot different. You know what I think one of the saddest things in hell would be? When your mind drives you back to your life and you think how it could have been. I could be in heaven right now. But no, I had to be big boy. I was tough. I was smart. I had it all figured out. I wouldn't listen. Yeah, and look where it's got me now. Saddest story I've ever heard. You can grow up in this world and nobody like you. Not have a pen in your pocket. Can't write your name in boxcar letters. If you've trusted Jesus as your Savior, and you know you're on your way to heaven when you die, you are not a failure. Your life's a success. You've done the best thing a person can do. I don't want your life to end up like this, folks. I know there's a big crowd of people here. This is a... This is uh, probably the biggest crowd of people in this part of the country this morning for church. And there's a lot of people here. But I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask some of you who are sitting back in there and up in the balcony, back over in here, some of you have been wrestling with this thing for a long time. It's just been eating at you and eating at you. And you know you're going to die. You know what I'm telling you is right. You know it's going to happen. Sooner or later you're going to have to deal with it. And I believe this morning will be just as good time as any. Don't let your life turn out like this, man. Let's stand, bow our heads.
every head bowed, every eye closed. God is speaking to your heart this morning. Can you feel him? Just knock him. God's knocking at your heart this morning. Every head bowed, I don't want nobody to move, nobody leave this building. This is absolutely important. This may be the most important minute for somebody in your whole life. Now I'm going to ask you a question this morning. And the question I'm going to ask you is, are you absolutely positive sure if you died today that you'd go to heaven? I didn't ask you, did you go to church? you a member somewhere? I didn't ask you that. I said, if you died today, are you 100% sure that you'd go to heaven? You say, preacher, I cannot answer that question. I, I, I just can't. And tell the truth, I can't answer that question and be honest. Well, maybe there's something you need to get right. Maybe you've just been tricked or deceived or something. I don't know. I'm not trying to talk you out of it. But just make sure you're saved here this morning. Make sure you're saved. Is there one here this morning say, Preacher, I know that I'm not ready to meet God. I know if Jesus come back today, I wouldn't be ready to meet Him. And I appreciate you preaching to me this morning, and I want you to pray for me. We'd like to pray for you this morning. We're not going to come to you. We're not going to embarrass you. Nobody's going to grab you by the arm and try to drag you to the altar. But we just want to pray for you this morning. If there's one here like that this morning... Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I wonder if you'd just slip up your hand and say, Remember me in prayer. Is there one? Anywhere. Raise it real high so I can see it. God bless you, sir. Is there another? Right quick. Right quick. Just slip. God bless you, ma'am. I see. God bless you back there. I see your hand. Anyone? Up in the balcony. Raise your hand. Raise your hand real high so I can see it. God bless you, sir. God bless you. That's about five here this morning. Anybody else? Anybody else? Be honest. This won't save you. And and we're not going to embarrass you. We're just going to pray for you. Anybody else? All right. God bless you, sir. We're going to pray now. I want you Christians to pray for these that lifted their hand. You that lifted your hand, why don't you take that next step? Why don't you take that next step and make you... And you say, Preacher, I need to be using my life to keep people out of hell. I need to be witnessing. It would be a good time for you just to come and say, God... I'm going to get down to business and live for you. There's more important things in your car and your house and your job and your income. There's a world dying without God. Father, do what ought to be done in this invitation. Please, dear Lord, please, touch our hearts. Speak to us. Bring Holy Spirit conviction. I've tried to do my best. Now you do what I can't do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.